everyone, it's Kara from I Stampin' Live. How are you doing? I thought I would pop on and show y'all this darling project that I made with some of the brand new product. But anyway, I wanted to show off this darling project. So this little gift bag is inspired by the June Stampin' Anonymous tutorials. It's inspired by this little bag right here. This one's different. Um, the dimensions are a little bit different. Um, obviously I used uh, a different stamp set and paper. Um, but these are wonderful tutorials. It's all about gift, uh, gift cards or gift um, bags this month. So um, if you have not um, seen these before, um, when you purchase from me for, for the month of June, you'll get these free. Um, if you join my team, you get these free. Or if you uh, want to, you can just pay $9.95 um, and get the tutorials. They're full color PDF. So, um, kind of, they're a little bit out of order. <laughs> but anyway, it's full color. The, the, the instructions are phenomenal. Um, and it tells you everything that you need to do. So you can just head on over to iStampin.com. And if you um, scroll down on the right side, you'll see this thumbnail. And um, that's you can just click on that and it will tell you how to go about um getting the tutorials and then also just as a reminder my BOGO sale started on Wednesday June the 5th so um, again if you just go on over to iStampin.com you'll see a blog post about my BOGO sale and um, the Google document that you can um, look through and see if there's anything that you would like to purchase but anyway, I just wanted to show off this absolutely adorable gift bag and this tissue paper, y'all. This is coming from May's Paper Pumpkin Kit. Um, I like to save the tissue paper and it worked beautifully with this project. So let's get started. Let me show you everything that you're going to need to make this. So the first thing that you're going to need is the free as a bird bundle. Okay, so this is, um, this suite is on page 91 of our brand new catalog. Let me take that off. I, I get my um, catalog spiral bound and staples puts um, the little clear acetate cover on them, but I know on camera it's probably glaring. But anyway, if you would like a copy of this, just reach out to me and we'll get in contact about how to get a copy to you if you have not received one. But here on page 91, um, Stampin' Up! is doing something a little bit different uh, this year. They are doing um, a code that includes everything that you need. So, um, but on page 92, um, I am using the Free as a Bird stamp set along with the Designer Series paper. And then I'm also using, using the Stitch Nested Labels. And I've got to get into the habit of saying dies, not framelets or thinlets or whatever we used to call them. Um, and then you can find those on page 196. So they are right here. And they coordinate with, um, they coordinate with free as a bird and of course a lot of other different things. So anyway, um, so you're gonna need that. Um, you will also need the Free as a bird, or no, oh, that's not what it's called. This still is also new to me, so I'm still learning all this stuff. Bird Ballad Designer Series Paper. So let me just show you some of the paper if you haven't seen this in person yet. Um, the colors are Basic Black, Basic Gray, Bermuda Bay, Calypso Coral, Crumb Cake, Daffodil Delight, Old Olive, Petal Pink, Pool Party, Smoky Slate, Soft Suede, and Whisper White. So we've got lots and lots of colors. But um, here is one of them. And you always get 12 sheets. They're double-sided. And some pretty birds. This is the paper that I'm using for the gift bag. So the A side is this beautiful collection of birds. And then we have this print right here and some fun stripes and then a pretty floral and then some keys and there's a, a 
some bird ballad trinkets that go along with this collection. There's a lot of nice things that um, come in this suite. And some feathers. And then some bird cages. And then that's the paper I've already shown you. And then this beautiful design, isn't that just gorgeous? Has a beautiful watercolor background. And then just kind of a graphic, almost looks like um, bird footprints. So there is that collection. And this is what we're gonna use to make the gift bag right here. So um, what I've done is I've cut uh, this contrasting paper. Um, it's a half inch by eight and a half inches. And then this piece, this is going to make the gift bag. This measures five and a quarter by eight and a half. So you'll need that. And we'll do our scoring in just a second. This is the 5 8 inch organdy stripe ribbon and petal pink. This is on back order right now. Um, they're expecting this to be back in um, stock on June 24th. So that's just, you know what, today's the 6th. So just in a couple of weeks. Um, this actually uh, is just you know, some ribbon. It doesn't go with this collection, but you know, obviously it matches perfectly. So I did go ahead and just use this because you can order it. It's just going to come separately um, when you um, get the other items uh, if, if you like this project. For ink, um, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink along with Pool Party. Um, we are going to do some coloring, so that's why I'm using the Tuxedo Black Ink. So I'm going to use Thick Whisper White cardstock. And then for these little sprigs, this is using the Sprig Punch right here. And I went ahead and got out some scraps of Old Olive and Pear Pizzazz. And then to color in the bird and the flowers, I have combination of these markers. So I'm using um, Petal Pink. I've got the combo pack. I have the Pool Party combo pack. And then I have the Daffodil Delight combo pack. And then um, the pearls are just our basic pearls. This is an old um, set of pearls, but the size that I'm using, that's the size we still carry. Um, and then I used some um, tear and tape adhesive to put the, the bag together, and then just some mini dimensionals to pop up this sentiment. And then of course, you know, you'll need your die cut machine, whichever one um, you prefer. And uh, for the holes, I'm using my crocodile. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I, for this one, I used it the 3 16th side, and that's too big the knot can actually come through. So I'm gonna go back to the 1 8 inch size. So if you have the 1 8 in, inch punch, you can use that. So what we're gonna do first is go ahead and attach this strip to the top piece of this paper because I want to be able to score this also. So I'm just gonna use snail for this. And go ahead and get So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this at the very top. This is gonna be the top of our bag. So just make sure this lines up evenly. There we go. Okay, perfect. And I'm a little long on one side and I'm I'm a little short on the other, so no big deal. So I'm just gonna trim off this side that's hanging off. Okay. Okay, now get your scoring board. I'm just using our Simply Scored tool. And because this is designer series paper, um, you do want to be gentle when you are uh, scoring. If you press too hard, you may have the tendency to tear it. So just kind of be gentle when you're scoring. But what we're gonna do is we have the paper on the long side and we're gonna score this at three inches, three and a half, and four inches. Then we're gonna come down and score this at seven, seven and a half, and eight inches. 
So that was three, three and a half, and four inches. Then again, it's seven, seven and a half, and eight inches. And then rotate it on the short side and score it at one inch. And that's all the scoring we have to do. I'm gonna get my bone folder. And when making 3D projects, it's really important that you have a bone folder so that you get really good creases. Burnish it well. And then, so what this bag is, is you can see that it kind of has like a little, let me take the tissue paper out, kind of has that little W fold. So what you're gonna do is on the three inch fold, you're gonna fold it this way that makes sense this way and then the middle score line you're gonna fold it backwards making sure that our paper is straight and then burnish it and then at the four inch line you're gonna go forwards again so forwards backwards forwards and then we're gonna repeat the exact same thing on the other end so if you can kind of get that idea, that's where that little W fold comes in. So at the seven inch line, fold it forward and burnish. Seven and a half, fold it backwards. I guess they also call this like a mountain fold or a fan fold. And then at the seven or the eight inch, Whoops, fold it forward. So you can see that. Whoops. All righty. So that is the folding. Now what we're going to do is, um, here is the one inch line. And so what you're going to do is grab your scissors and you are just going to cut on the scissors are a little sticky. You're going to cut on the three inch line up to the one inch line that's going horizontal and then at the four inch line. Yeah, three and four inch line and then again at the seven and eight inch line. And what this is doing are these are going to be our side flaps. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is kind of fold this side and this is where I'm going to put my tear and tape and you'll put your tear and tape from the top all the way down to the bottom like so and then what I like to do is just burnish part of it and then just pick it up and this is the easiest way to fold these kind of bags is just lay it flat and just match up the bottom and the and the top and then you shouldn't have any problem and so there is our bag at least part of it okay so next what we're gonna do is just put a little bit of tear and tape on both of the side flaps be a little bit long like so and then we need to figure out which is the back okay so this is the back so I'm gonna put adhesive on the underside of this flap okay so let's go ahead and remove the backing on the sides And you kind of have to be careful. Try not to put this on the table or that adhesive will stick to your paper. Okay. So then what we're going to do is fold in the sides like so. And put down this flap. You want to make sure that your flaps are square. And then fold this over. Okay. 
and I've got a little bit, I'm not sure what happened. I've got a little bit of showing, so I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim that off. I'm not sure what I did there. But if that happens to you, it's easy enough just to give it a little haircut. And then what you can do is you can take your bone folder and kind of poke those inside flaps down so it gives it a secure secure thing. Or you can put your hands in there like I did. Okay, so then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my crocodile. Okay, that's good. And um, <laughs> I'm going to try really hard to uh, space these evenly. We'll see. Really, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, once you get the tissue paper in there and everything, nobody's going to notice that you're kind of off center. I'm just eyeballing this, so we'll see how I did. Not too bad. Okay, so then I'm just going to take some of this ribbon. And I've got my ribbon scissors that, oh my gosh, I'll have to tell you a story. Okay, so I have these ribbon scissors that I got years ago. Um, they're the Martha Stewart ones, and I like them because I can use them left-handed. I also have these that um, sometimes you've seen me use. These are Stampin' Up! scissors um, that we used to sell. Um, and for some reason, being left-handed, I can't use them, but I like them. So anyway, these two scissors have been my dedicated ribbon scissors. They're like, they were, I should say, were like virgin scissors. The only thing that had ever touched their blades were ribbon. So last Saturday or last Friday, my daughter, you know, she's out of school and um, she made the captain of the dance team. So, you know, that's exciting for her. And so um, she and her officer friends um, came over to make posters for their big sister little sister reveal and so what that means is like the upperclassmen um take uh get like one of the freshmen on the team and you know they kind of like you know that they're like their little big sis for the year and stuff like that so she asked me you know hey mom you know we're coming over can i use some of your you know your supplies and stuff like that and i'm like yeah no problem so i'm outside um hanging out by the pool with my husband and i happen to walk in and i see one of the girls cutting poster board with these scissors and I'm like I just about panic I'm like okay I can't say anything I don't want to embarrass my daughter but I'm just like I'm seriously freaking out I'm like oh my gosh they're using my ribbon scissors they're using them on poster board then I walk back in and my daughter's using these and I just I'm like I'm like I go out to my husband and he's like Kara it's okay I'll buy you new scissors and I texted some of my um, Stampin' Up, you know, demonstrator friends, and I'm like, okay, y'all are, only y'all are going to understand this, and they were just going, oh my gosh, I would be, I'd be crying, or I'd be, anyway, it was funny, so, they still work, but, you know, they're not pristine anymore, I had them for five years, I, mean, you know, I guess five years is pretty good, keeping a <laughs> scissors, from using a uh, paper, but my daughter was like, you have all these scissors. I didn't know that they were, there were certain scissors I wasn't supposed to use. I'm like, you gotta ask me next time. But I did really well. Years and years ago, I would have like freaked out, but as I've gotten older, I've learned that I've gotta be more mellow. So I have to say, I was very proud of myself for not losing it. I was losing it on the inside, but not, I didn't lose it on the outside. I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to embarrass my daughter. Okay, so I'm sorry. As I was telling the story, I was doing this. So you see how I just um, thread the uh, the ribbon through the hole, and then I knot it. And this ribbon, the hole's a little bit smaller, so I'm just taking my paper piercer just to kind of help me get it through there. And um, then I knot it, and then I'll trim off the excess after I'm done. And so, you know, it's pretty easy to, you know, kind of get both sides even. So what I'll do here is, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of like making, you know, I want to see how the 
so that the ribbon is, is going the right way. So then I'll poke it in this way. Whoops, okay, maybe not. So have y'all done that before where you have like pristine, you know, you have like ribbon scissors or, or fabric scissors, you know, if you're a sewer or a quilter that are only meant for that kind of use and your family <laughs> starts cutting them on paper or something. That was just... So after the fact, after, you know, I kind of, Oh, how long is the ribbon? Um, I'm probably, let's see. I'm probably cutting about eight inches, Chris. I would say that gives you enough to be able to knot it. I always like to have a little bit, you know, there's been plenty of times where I haven't had enough ribbon. And I'll fiddle with it for so long, and then I just get frustrated, and I end up just cutting another piece. So, I think it's better to have more than not enough. Oh, come on. Come on, Josie. The cats went back in now. Okay. I normally don't do my Facebook Lives at this time, so my house is a little bit more lively than normal. Okay, come on. Okay, so, and then what I do is I just kind of like hold both of them to see if I can get them pretty even on both sides. That looks good. Okay, so now I'll just trim these tails and the bag will be done and now we can start working on our stamping. Okay. So isn't that darling? <laughs> I just love this. Just so, so cute. So next we're gonna stamp the bird. And like I said, I'm using Thick Whisper White cardstock. That works really well with our um, Stampin' Blends. Yeah, that looks about right. So this one is um, from point to point. It's about three and a half inches, a little over three and a half inches long. So that's just gonna go like so. So let me get my big shot up here. So if y'all get um, paper pumpkin, don't throw that tissue paper away. I, I keep it and I have used it for so many different things. Um, and I'm kind of like offsetting the, um, the stitched label because I wanna have more room over here to put my flowers. Of the idea and these these dies are really nice these are our new dies you know we ended our relationship with Sizzix and I have to say these new dies are same quality if not a little bit better this is a lot easier to get off the paper okay so I'm gonna color the bird and I'm going to use a combination of Petal Pink and Pool Party. And so um, I'm going to start off with Petal Pink, the light color. Oh, and I did use a little bit of Daffodil Delight on the beak. So I'm just going to come in here and just color in. And then I'll come back with the dark Petal Pink and put a little bit of shading in there. I like to use the pin, the bullet end, when coloring. I feel like I have a little bit more control. And if you're watching me for the first time, I'm still a very much a novice with our Stampin' Blends. So if you have a lot more experience, I'm always open to tips. Okay. And I'm just blending it in. Okay. And now I'm coming in with the light pool party and just doing the same thing. Just coloring in the body of the bird. Like so. 
so. And then the nice thing with these line stamps, wherever the lines are, that's kind of where I'm putting my shading. So now I'm just gonna come in and blend this. And then because the beak is so small, I'm just gonna use the daffodil, the light color. Okay, so there's the bird. I'm not gonna worry about any of the, the like the ground, cause I'm going to, the little, the little banner kind of covers that up, so I'm not gonna worry about that. So now I'm gonna come back in with this piece and I'm gonna stamp the two different size flowers. I'm gonna stamp the large flower once and then the small flower twice. And I fussy cutted these out and it wasn't too bad do one of these in pink and then while y'all while I'm coloring this y'all can tell me if you want me to color I was thinking you know blue maybe but I don't know okay so what I'm starting off here is using the dark petal pink in the center and then coming in with the light daffodil delight and kind of coloring the outside of the petals And then I'm using the dark Daffodil Delight. And again, kind of like what I was saying earlier, wherever these lines are, that's kind of where I'm using that for shading. Okay, then coming back with the, the light color here and blend all that in. Okay, and then I just pretty much did, whoops, the exact same thing on this small flower too. So what do y'all think of the new catalog? Do you like it? I, whoops, yikes. It's not supposed to do that. I love this catalog. I think the samples in the catalog this year are some of the best that I've seen. Um, I'm going on six years as a demonstrator and I have to tell y'all, when I saw this catalog, I was like, oh my gosh. The samples are just gorgeous. Okay, so let me get my snips out. I'm going to do two in old olive and then two in um, pear pizzazz. Okay. And so what I did here is I'm going to layer all the flowers on to the um, label first and then I'll come back with the pearl. So let's see, let's put them like that. And then what I did here is I just snipped the bottom part of the sprig so I could have them in two pieces. 
and then just put a little bit of snail on the back side and just kind of layered them like so. Um, let me do the pear pizzazz one first. So kind of giving it a little dimension with the with the lighter and darker color, if that makes sense. And then come in with the other yellow flower. And let's see here. I think I did all of my, all of, whoops, get off of me. I think I did all of my sprigs at once and you may only need one of each. Let's see here. Um, and you just kind of like, you know, just overlap them. And, you know, see what it looks like. It kind of looks a little messy <laughs> like this, but then when you when you cover them up with the flowers, you would never know. Okay, and then I put this one up on a dimensional. I'm just using the mini dimensionals which are the perfect size for this. Yeah, so something like that. You know, you can kind of play around um, with this, but I think that's good for right now. And then I'm just gonna place um, a pearl on the inside, if I can grab it, of each of these flowers. So, whoops. Mm. Okay, and then one more right here. This set is just gorgeous. It's just such a pretty, pretty, pretty collection. Okay, so then we can put snail on the back of our label. And that's going to go about like so. And then, you know, put your gift card in there and just stuff your little paper. Oh, I got to do the banner. Um, okay, so we're just going to stamp this. I'm just using the Thick Whisper White. I'm using pool party. What is it, Lottie? <laughs> These cats, I have spoiled them. If I don't give them attention, they're crying, meowing for me. And then um, if y'all watch me, you know, this is my little favorite little paper trimmer that I like to use to trim down my banners. And I'm just gonna trim it down just a little bit on the left side. And then this is a banner that we retired a couple years ago, but it's handy dandy. Um, you could obviously do this with scissors, um, our tag topper punch, our tailor punch, all that kind of stuff, but I just grabbed that. And then um, I put this up on dimensionals. So this is going to hang off the label a little bit, and um, I'll do one more. I just this little project just makes me so happy. It's just so pretty. Come on, there we go. And it says we're the best of friends. So what a nice sentiment to put on there to give a gift to a friend and there we go so what do y'all think isn't that just precious 
Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. So like I said, this is just um, a, a rendition of, you know, a different um, kind of take on the uh, project that's in the Stampin' Anonymous Stampin' Anonymous tutorials for June. So if you um, missed the very beginning, um, you can get those for free when you shop in my online store in the month of June. I have my BOGO sale going on through uh, June 15th. So you will still qualify for the Stampin' Anonymous tutorials when you shop my BOGO sale. And how that works is um, when you shop from my BOGO sale, you're able to, however much you choose from the BOGO sale, from the retirement sale, um, you are able to choose free product from the annual catalog. So it's a great way to get some retired product um, and get free product at the same time. So if you have any questions about that, um, just reach out to me and I can you know talk to you a little bit more about it if you're if that doesn't make sense. All right, guys. Well, um, if you have any questions about this, like I said, just shoot me uh, just comment below and um, join me. Join me later this, this week for some more projects. And so, again, this was the free as a bird. This is a good one, guys. You got to get it. All right. Have a great evening, guys. Bye-bye.